Okay, so hi everyone. Don't have much time, so just say hi. Thanks very much for this invitation. So I'm going to talk about how to create timelines about past web events using archive.pt. So first of all, what is the problem? The problem is that 80% of the web pages disappear or change their content after one year. Uh, and what is archive.pt? So basically it's a free online service, so anyone can use it that preserves publicly accessible information related to portal, but also to research and education in, in, in general. It preserves historical information published online since the 1990s. So we can see here on the left, the oldest page that we have that is from 1993 and the oldest image that we have that is from 1992. Um, so Archive.pt is used worldwide. So more than half of our users don't come from Portugal. Our user interfaces are also available in English. And these days combining with Google Translate, for instance, anyone can uh, make cross-lingual uh, analysis of the historical content from the past web, even if they don't speak Portuguese or another language of the content that we have preserved. So anyone can go to archive.pt and search and access the preserved information. You can search for texts in la any language. So it's, it's kind of a Google for the past. You just type the keywords and you get uh, pages from the past that have these, these words. Uh, you can search the history of our address. So you just put the, the URL on the input doc, uh, box and you get a list of all the versions that were archived in that URL a long time. For instance, you can browse how it was the BBC uh, website 10 years ago, and then you can uh, click on the links and, and browse the, the website as it was in the past. Uh, and you can also search images from the past. So you just put a, a set of keywords and you get images related to that keyword. Uh, and all of this is available for automatic processing. And that is the focus of our lesson. So anyone can use our application programming interfaces. And uh, we have four application programming interfaces, which uh, uh, two of them are specific to explore the features provided by Archive.pt and two of them are uh, based on international standards so that uh, the people can reuse software or make our service more interoperable. Everything is available at archive.pt slash API. Um, and uh, our, APA, our APIs are, are documented on GitHub. So you can get there the, the, the parameters that you can, uh, that can put on the request to get the information that you may need. And you can also get the, um, the details about the response fields that you get from archive.pt. Uh, and you also provide user examples. So you can see the example of, of the, the responses that you get back. They are uh, provided in, in JSON. Uh, and you can get uh, the examples for full text search or for URL search. Um, so the API clients can be written in any programming language. We provide an example in Java at, at archive.pt, but now we also have uh, a very simple example that we included in our lesson uh, in Python. Um, so, and the, the, the second part of my presentation is about, of our presentation is about timeline summarization because this was uh, implemented on Tell Me Stories. It is a translation of quantum stories that of quantum stories that automatically generates narratives about any subject based on online news from the past. Uh, these, they were the winners of the Archive.pt Award uh, 2018. This is an annual award that grants uh, over uh, 10,000 euros in awards in, for works that use Archive.pt. If you want to learn more about them, just check Archive.pt slash awards. Um, and I must say that regarding these APIs, we eat our dog food. So when you use archive.pt, everything that, that you use is based on our APIs. That's why it's also so much so important for us that if you have any problem or any suggestion, you get in touch because we can, we like to improve our APIs even for our own good so that our system gets better. Uh, and I said that there were four APIs and here you can see another API uh, being applied is the Memento API that is, um, the based on the Memento protocol. And here we did, we developed a very simple script that anyone can insert in their page not found error page. So instead of saying, uh, sorry, you don't have that page in the, in the current website, you say, we don't have that page, but there is a web archive version of it. And the message only appears if 
if the page was web archived at archive.pt or at any other web archive that you may configure. This is quite handy and really simple and not intrusive. So we are deploying this now at a, a much larger scale and it, it has been uh, working quite well. Okay, so we provide training about web archiving. So if you want to learn more about this, um, we have four modules about web archiving. One is an introductory module that is set to any internet user about how to use archive.pt. The second one is directed to web authors or publishers. It says basically teaches how to publish preservable information on the web. The third one is about the APIs. And the fourth is about how anyone these days can do web archiving with very few resources. And we have all this uh, the, uh, presented at archive.pt slash training. You have also some videos in English, so you can take a look at that. And we also have this book that I believe some people know in this in this audience. So it's a new book about the past web. And you have there several research use cases, very interesting. And uh, one of one of the chapters is at, uh, at the, the the work done by Ricardo Camps. You can take a look at that. And there's a preprint version freely available at archive.pt slash book. So if you don't know if you it's worth if it is worth it to buy the book, you can take a look at the preprint version first. So now I hand handle to Ricard. And so if, if you don't mind, I will share my screen in, sure. a, in a bit so I, I don't stay dependent on the, on you. I'm not sure if you can uh, already see the screen yet. Can you? Yeah. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. Okay. So okay, so it's perfect. So as mentioned by Daniel, uh, so we are the, 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 the proud winners of the Archivo.pt awards in, in 2018 with our project Tell Me Stories, uh, which eventually, as you can see here on the, on the image, ended up being integrated in the infrastructure. So as you can see here in the image, uh, now you have the chance to, uh, to search for uh, as Google-like type uh, web pages for, for, for queries, but also for images and also for narrative elements of the story. Um, and, and this will simply redirect the user to, to the, the main web page of our system. Um, so as mentioned by Daniel, so the project is entitled Tell Me Stories. Um, there is actually uh, an, an English version, which is based not on Archivo, but on another data set. But we current, it's currently not working. So if you want to go along, um, then afterwards with the web page, I will uh, highly suggest you to, to, to go to the Portuguese uh, version. Um, and, and although the, the, the most of the results are in Portuguese, there is uh, obviously an, an English interface, which it probably might be useful for, for you. Um, so. When you are in the in a home page, you will see a Google-like type uh, um, uh, web page where users uh, you can issue a query of your interest, or alternatively select um, one of our suggestions, such as uh, the ones you can see here on on the bottom. The thing here is that uh, unlike Google, which is mostly focused on the recent uh, uh, web pages and on the present web. Uh, users, in our case, will be invited to navigate uh, uh, in, in the past web. So in this example, and given the query Donald Trump, uh, users will be given the chance to navigate through a timeline of, uh, of stories, which are fitted um, into automatically determined time periods. So in this example, uh, we can see a couple of news articles uh, from uh, 2011 to 2016 uh, that tell the story of Donald Trump uh, in, in the Portuguese, Portuguese news. So for instance, we can see the moment where Donald Trump announced his candidacy to the United States of America, also the moment when his rival uh, Jeb Bush did, did the same followed by uh, several other important moments, such as uh, when he announced his willingness uh, in forbidding Muslims to enter into the country, or, or the moment uh, here you can see in, in, in the bottom of, of, of the webpage, where Hillary Clinton also announced uh, that she was uh, going uh, into, into the race. So, and the most interesting thing here of this is that if you click on any of those uh, titles, 
Uh, so it, it has a, a link embedded, and you will have access to the web page as it was preserved in the past by the archivo.pt infrastructure. Um, users can then move on the narrative by going through the timeline. Uh, so in a glimpse, uh, we can see here uh, also the moment when Donald Trump won his first uh, election. So it's here, but it, it's, in, it's in Portuguese. Um, together with some interesting stories about the fact that Donald Trump pushed Putin to return Crimea to Ukraine, that put in mock accusations of Russian uh, spying on Donald Trump. When Donald Trump threatens, uh, threatens North uh, Korea, um, or, or even again here in the bottom of the webpage, when the Pope Francis uh, uh, announced I was going to welcome Trump in, in the Vatican. So beyond these, uh, users will also be given the chance to get a word cloud of the most relevant terms. So associated with the query uh, Donald Trump. So we can see here um, uh, some important keywords of Donald Trump history, such as Kim Jong Young, and again Ukraine, uh, Trump Tower, United States, Barack Obama, Bernie Sanders, North Korea, Vladimir Putin, or again uh, the Pope Francis. Um, and how do you, do we do this uh, workload? So we actually uh, used um, our uh, keyword extractor uh, algorithm, Yake. Uh, yet another keyword extractor, which you can also find on the web and which is actually um, based. Uh, so I will say that tell me stories. It's anchored and it's based on uh, on the on part of this uh, algorithm. So this algorithm has been widely used by the research community from digital libraries to, to, to tech companies uh, due to its easiness in, in adapting to documents of different nature, domain, and even, and mostly I will say uh, languages. So I know you're probably from the digital libraries domain and you may found this useful uh, to use and to try for your own purposes. So I, I challenge you to, to do this uh, later on. Uh, so in a nutshell, uh, uh, what Tell Me Story shows us is that we researchers, professionals dealing with information every day, or even our childs, uh, can use these kind of tools to get contextualized information from valuable platforms such as the archivo.pt infrastructure. And I, I myself often do this and have found some interesting stories. Um, we might have probably forgotten, but there was life and other syndromes uh, before the COVID uh, pandemics, uh, as is the case of the Middle East Respiratory uh, Syndrome, which was already in the past a, dist a disturbing disease, um, which I, I found it has several similarities with the COVID. So it, it was a not a fun fact, but it was an, an interesting fact uh, uh, to me or also political actors who already have a long, long story in the media. Uh, and we'll probably don't know that in 2012, Mikhail Gorbachev recommended Putin to withdraw his candidacy for the Russian president. So um, I just typed this uh, today on, on our search engine and found, again, some, uh, some very in interesting, um, interesting uh, uh, titles. So another interesting aspect is that we made our solution available to the community, to the research community, to whoever wants to try it through a Python package, so, which can be applied with minor uh, adaptations to other collections of people's interest. So you probably might consider running these in the future on, on top of uh, any collection that uh, you want to. So in what follows and without Further delays. I will showcase a, a brief demo of this of the lesson that Daniel and and I uh, prepared, and which uh, uh, will be soon available on G GitHub for people to consume. Uh, so, uh, so I prepared a, um, a short video. So, as you can see here in this in this Python notebook that we that we have prepared, um, uh, uh, there, there's the the chance for people uh, to set up here a, a few domains which are nothing more than the news providers where the search that the user is going to issue um, uh, will look for information. So as a rule of thumb in, in, in our system, we uh, use 24 news uh, sources uh, from, from Portugal, but this can be adapted uh, even from national or from national news sources to uh, local ones. And um, we can also here uh, can see here in the parameter setting that the user can specify 
um, uh, the, the date, uh, the beginning date uh, and the ending date where the query is going to be uh, to be issue. In this running example, um, I, I'm showing the query uh, put in. So we just need to press enter and the system will automatically um, uh, interact with the uh, uh, archivo.pt API, as um, uh, Daniel already explained. And um, in this interaction, the system was able to return approximately 10 key search results from uh, the from the uh, archivo.pt infrastructure. And uh, this is where uh, our system starts to starts to interact. So we receive all these documents. We have here the timeline, the news source, the title, and again we have here the, the, the title, uh, sorry, the, the link to the web page as it was preserved. And, and then with this simple code, we can, um, we can just uh, uh, see how our Tell Me Stories project um, uh, uh, works, not how it works, but we can get results from, from, from it. So we can see here the, the timeline and then the, the time periods and all the results a list of results of the most important results from that uh, time period. So this actually resembles what the normal and the common user can see on the demo web page that I have shown you. Uh, but um, uh, here we can see it uh, in um, in um, in, uh, in in coding, right? And when uh, up and programming. Um, so uh, to to conclude, I would just like to to say that this is the work of of several. Uh, uh, people uh, that have already collaborated with us over the, the years from, from students to, to senior, senior members. And I would like to thank them all. Also a huge thanks uh, from the archivo.pt uh, uh, to the archivo.pt team. So this goes directly to, to Daniel for the amazing work uh, they have been doing uh, with this uh, infrastructure. And thanks. Thank you very much indeed, Daniel and Ricardo. Uh, 